All right, let's go ahead and get started. We'll um, let's crank this up. As you can see here on the uh, on the jumbotron. Um, we're not talking about Armageddon, as the email said. That's not the, what we're talking about tonight. Um, we're talking about America and the end times, and we're going to talk about two different areas, okay? Is no this mystery. The last week of this? this is it, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no quattro? Yeah, we're talking about no mystery in the history, and then America and the Bible. And we'll look at that um, and kind of wrap this up as we, as we kind of bring to a close our trilogy here. Um, <laughs> I know, well, it's just, wow. I can understand, I understand. All I um, care about is if I don't have to go through You don't. Mess. Okay. <laughs> you right. That's enough said. No, no, no. She says, oh, we're done, we're done. <laughs> See, on the board here, we'll make the map, and we'll do it then. Uh, um, now, tonight is one of those nights that we're going to get to a point in this uh, endeavor where I will do what I always tell you that I try to do. Um, I will get to the point where I, uh, I, I no longer know what I'm talking about, <laughs> and so it will all simply be speculation, and you are more than welcome to disagree and um, go teach your own class somewhere. Um, <laughs> because, again, we're going to get to a point where we, we just don't know, okay? And so we'll get there eventually. But to begin with, um, if you're looking at the board, uh, the screens are changing there, you're going to see the Washington Monument come up in just a minute. Uh, when the sun rises over Washington, D.C. each morning, uh, if you could see it from the, the angle of the sun, um, the rays fall on the eastern side of that structure. Uh, 555 feet tall, the first part of the monument that reflects the morning light is a uh, it's the eastern side of the aluminum capstone, and in it, on it are the words inscribed in Latin that mean, praise be to God. Now, you can't see that unless you're there at the right angle and have that kind of that upper view of it, but that's what's at the top of the Washington Monument. Uh, it's there for a reason. Uh, it's a prayer of praise. Um, the only people that could see it is you have to see it. If you're going to see it, they say it's visible to the eyes of heaven alone. Um, but it is a recognition of something that was very important in the beginnings of this nation called America. Um, for those that think it might be a bit grandiose, uh, there's a book called In the Light and the Glory by Peter Marshall and David Manuel, and they ask a profound question. So I quote, what if, Columbus discovering, what if Columbus's discovering of America had not been accidental at all? What if it were merely the opening curtain of an extraordinary drama? Did God have a special plan for America? What if in particular um, did he have plan for those who would bring to America a plan which saw his, this continent as a stage for a new era in the drama of mankind's redemption? Ronald Reagan believed that America um, had a plan. He said, I've always believed that this anointed land was set apart in an uncommon way that a divine plan placed this great continent here between the oceans to be found by people from every corner of the earth who had a special love for faith and freedom. And so I want you to know that as we talk about this night, I'm going to come at, I come at it from a, um, a believing that there is a connection between America and the sovereignty of God. And what I mean by that is this. One, I think that God does have a plan for America. Okay? But second... Um, it is true that we have no direct reference to the plan uh, in the Old or New Testaments. But it doesn't discount the fact that God has a plan for America. Okay? And so those are the things that I, I, I kind of build the next couple of minutes on. Um, which basically gives away this whole last piece of it. America in the Bible? No. I don't think it's there. Um, you can Google this if you want to. I, I don't, it, it's, up, it's entirely up to you. There is a, a small pocket of theological thought out there that does its best to find America in um, prophecy. Um, to get there, I'll tell you what they do at the front end. They, they end up in the book of Ezekiel, um, not Revelation uh, as much, but they end up in Ezekiel and they make a lot of jumps, seven jumps actually, um, that have to, to be made and they're pretty significant jumps, I think. 
um, to get to the point where they come to the conclusion that America is mentioned in the Bible. Um, I don't see it, um, and that's okay. Uh, I mean, that, that's all right. I mean, I, you know, again, as I've told you before, when it comes to this prophecy stuff, you can be right half the time like a good weatherman and be doing great. Um, I don't think it changes the game plan, but I'm going to share with you what I think uh, takes place or what you might need to know. And then, uh, you know, we can go with that and you can take that for what it's worth. And if it works for you, um, then that's good. And if you need to go more, then that, that's, that's okay too. I'm, I'm completely fine with that. But I'm going to do my best to kind of answer what it is that I think we need to remember about America in, in the end times. Um, if you go back, though, when you look at the history of America, there's no mystery in the history. Uh, I believe very strongly um, that America's early leaders turned to God for guidance. And I think at times throughout history, you see it. You see Washington kneeling in the snow at Valley Forge. You see the founders on their knees at the First Continental Congress. Um, you see Lincoln, Lincoln praying at, in the midst of a national crisis. Um, prior to the Civil War, we see Woodrow Wilson reading his Bible at night by the White House, at the White House. Um, Washington summarized the dependence we have as a nation on God when he said, No people can be bound to acknowledge and adore the invisible hand which conducts the affairs of men more than the people of the United States. And so for me, as a follower of Jesus, as an American, as someone that tries their best to kind of figure out how it all fits together, um, I don't believe that America became the land of the free and the home of the brave by coincidence. And I don't think it happened by luck. I don't believe in luck. Never have. Um, don't think it's biblical. Uh, and so I believe that the Bible tells us that our days were written for us before we were ever born. Um, I think that a benevolent God has had his hand on this nation since the very inception. There are some that will say, no, nah, it's just all luck. I think you begin to kind of come up with some ideas or some thoughts that really do begin to make sense when you start asking the question, well, guy, why has God chosen to bless America? Maybe more so than other places. I mean, my goodness. Um, I, I look and hear what goes on in the rest of the world, and I can't think of anywhere else I want to be. Um, I, I want to be here in, in America. Uh, why has America in a short history outstripped the wealth and the power and the influence of all ancient and modern civilizations. I mean, in a very short period of time, we have become um, the superpower of superpowers, uh, and that's who we are. Um, can God, um, or would God, is it in God's nature to bless a nation in such a way if He doesn't have some purpose for it on the world stage? Uh, I think there is something to be said for the fact that if you think about it, it just makes sense. If God has blessed you that much, He's blessed you that way for a reason. He has done what He has done for some purpose. Now, whether or not we get it right, oh, that's a whole different thing. But He has something in mind, and that's why we get to where we are. Um, and so what is the plan? What, where do we fit in the prophecy? And, and so, again, as I say, there's no mystery in the history. I, I think there are a number of things that we could say that help us understand um, some of the reasons that God has, has, has blessed or used America as they have, as He has, and, and I think that makes sense. But here's what I'm talking about. For, 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 for one thing, I think America has been a great force behind world missions. Uh, you know, Ian and Julie can sit here today and, and talk about the fact, you know, uh, what New Tribes is doing, but where does that launch place come from? Sanford, Florida. I mean, you know, I mean, but America has been a forerunner of trying to reach out into the world and mobilize people to go into the world. Does that mean other countries haven't done it? No, but it just means that America has become a launching place um, for God to put people, groups of people together, churches, organizations, people of like mind and like heart. Uh, because in the aftermath of World War II, Americans started 1,800 mission agencies since World War II. Now, I mean, it's making no value judgment of whether they've done a great job or not a good job, who's better, who's not. That's not what I'm saying. I'm simply saying we've been in a nation where we've had the freedom to establish that kind of footing and then try to do something spectacular with that. I want you to know, I don't think that God takes that for granted. I think that's a big deal. Uh, and I, am, uh, I, I think it's a cool place to be sitting that God would use America as a launch place for the gospel to go out. Now, does He use other places? Of course He does. He's God. 
but we have the freedom here that other places don't have. And so I think that that really is something um, that is a part of us and that underlying missionary zeal of churches and ministries in, in America, I think that God has been able to use that. So I think America has been a force in trying to help move the gospel out into the world, um, not as a national endeavor, but as a land where we've had the freedom to do that. I think that counts. I also think uh, that America has been a friend of the Jewish people. Um, I, America's historic support of Israel is based not so much on efforts by Jewish lobbyists in Washington or the presence of Jewish groups in our society, but I really do believe it's the Judeo-Christian heritage of the nation that has allowed that to take place. Um, President Truman was the one that was determined to recognize Israel as a modern state, and the reason that he did it, the stated reason that he did it, is he was fueled by a lifelong belief that in the book of Deuteronomy, God gave the land of Israel to that people for all time. So as an American president, when this nation was trying to reestablish itself, he was willing to stand in the gap and offer a biblical reason why Israel needed to exist. That's huge. It's huge. And he did that as a leader of the free nation. Uh, at the founding of the modern state of Israel, surrounding Arab nations immediately declared war on the new nation. Immediately declared war, and they've been at war ever since. Few, most, felt Israel would never survive the conflict, and Western nations didn't want to become embroiled in the conflict. And Truman, at the time, was under pressure not to intervene. Uh, but it was in the midst of all of those things that were transpiring um, that he brought America into a partnership with Israel that continues to this day. And you've heard me say many times, it's important what we do with Israel. Our partnership strategically with Israel on the world stage is huge. And maybe one of the most spiritual things that we look at for election times, when we look at candidates, when we listen to uh, the, the news on the uh, news that you'll hear on any given evening, what's going on in Israel and how are we reacting to that, it matters. The reason, of course, is in Genesis 12, 3, God promised to bless those who bless Israel. That promise doesn't have, a, doesn't have an expiration date. God has promised to bless those who bless Israel. You don't bless Israel? Why not? I mean, you, you, you decide that you want to either not believe that there's a God who does the blessing out there, or you want to align yourself with those things that God says are important. And so America has been abundantly blessed as a nation, I believe, because we have been a friend to Israel and we have befriended the Jewish people. I think we can build a historical record on that, and I don't think that's a mystery. Um, America has also been a free nation. Uh, I've discovered in my study of Scripture that the principles of freedom are, are very much united with the tenets of Christianity, because America in so many ways is a laboratory for the way that those blended principles can develop and become an example. The Bible says you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Will set you free. But freedom um, can't be taken for granted. There is a watchdog group called Freedom House that studies the challenges to democracy and freedom around the world. And in 2018, so just a few years ago, Freedom House annual report indicated that only 45% of the world's population lives in nations that are categorized as free. 45% of the world's population live in a nation that you would categorize as free. That means fair, uh, free and fair elections, the rights of minorities, freedom of the press, rule of law. Um, the tendency in a fallen world is always away from freedom and always toward tyranny. And we live in a fallen world. And so because we live in a fallen world, we're always falling, and the natural tendency is to fall toward tyranny and away from freedom. That's who we are. That's who people are. That's who people is. That's the best way to say that. That's what happens. Uh, and, and so that is a natural battle that's going on. And so America has been a place um, that has been a free nation. We have been able to maintain that. Uh, America has learned um, what um, repressive, radical, and terrorist adversaries do not understand when it comes to freedom that liberty without law is anarchy. Liberty to defy law is rebellion. But li liberty that is limited by law is a cornerstone of civilization. And those are lessons that we need to learn today. That's not old news. That's not fake news. 
That's real news. Can you say that again? Sure. That's not old news. No. That's not. <laughs> Liberty without law is anarchy. <laughs> Liberty to def defy law is rebellion. But liberty limited by law is the cornerstone of civilization. And America as a nation has tried to develop or help people understand that freedom is what creates the life that God intended for us to have from the beginning. In some ways, America... Um, is, is uh, been a, a, a paradise of human liberty, uh, an oasis in a world of trouble. Um, and it is a nation that puts a dramatic explanation point to the assertion that freedom works. And how do you know that? Because everybody wants to come to America. And when people get here, they want to bring their own baggage with them and try to turn it into the place they came from, which is nuts. <laughs> But everybody wants to come to America. Why? Because there's something appealing about that. What we're doing right now, oh my gosh, is a blessing that we just take for granted and make a matter of convenience. That there are people all across the globe that would fight and have fought for moments that they could come together like this. And we just think it's not a big deal. We think the fact that we can get together on a Sunday morning uh, is, you know, I, I get there, I get there. There are people who are willing to fight and die for that opportunity because it cost them everything to go into those environments. And so we have been just so, so blessed um, with what it is that God has allowed us to do and God allowed us to become. Um, and so our nation is just a great uh, example of what can happen when freedom takes hold and sets in. Now, that's why... You know, that's why what we talked about before when we talked back in November about, you know, what kind of, what kind of political candidate was Jesus? You know, all, all those things become important for us as followers. What do we do? I mean, some of you, we talked about a minute ago, you're praying on the mountain this week or you're praying on the mountain this month. You know, the way, we need to pray for our nation because, again, what we do matters. And the thing is, if you don't value what matters, then it ceases to be important and you begin to apologize for it and, it, and it ceases to be something that you hold on to. And if we aren't careful, that heritage of freedom is being challenged. And so we have to make sure that we, as followers, hold on to freedom as the gift that it is, because we know where it comes from. We know what the founders said. Uh, America is great. It is the greatest thing going. I say that unapologetically. You know, my favorite actors of all time, there's three, well, that's four of them. John Wayne, the man was American. Bruce Willis, all time Christmas movie with Die Hard. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. Anybody can do Rocky and Rambo in one lifetime and make a dozen movies about it. It works. And, and well, and then Harrison Ford just because. I thought you were going to say Shatner. Uh, well, yeah. uh, no, Shatner, he's like, if he were Baptist, he would be like the Pope. But he's Jewish, so I, he, he just can't, he, he can't be the Pope. But um, anyway, but, but. All of, those, all of those actors, I gravitate toward those actors that tell those bigger, larger-than-life stories, those heroic stories of America. And again, unapologetically, right? You know, uh, Stallone, I heard in an interview one time, he said, you know, he said, Rambo doesn't work. He said, if there weren't enough people out there in the 80s that really thought America was the greatest country on the face of the planet, John Rambo never becomes an iconic movie character. But he did. And there's something about that, that believing that, that I think that sometimes, boy, we can get just so spoiled and we forget what matters. And so America's freedom, I think, really does matter. Uh, America also is founded on God's word. I don't care what you say. I don't care how they spin it. It is no mystery why God, the America's founders insisted on principles of freedom. Their dependence on the God of the Bible led them to subject themselves to him as the ultimate authority 
for how they needed to set up the rules and govern themselves. And they decided and were wise enough, whether they lived it out well or not, to rely on a set of standards that were not of their own creation. Now, people get nervous when they hear that. And they will, they will want to debate that with you. But yet, if you take an honest look at history, not revisionist history, but an honest look at history, you'll discover that a very flawed group of men came together, that first Continental Congress, and were able to do something that was absolutely phenomenal. But what they did time and time again is they kept going back to those original things that they believed um, that God had set apart the dependence on God characterized uh, by a government philosophy um, that, th that kind of grew and through several generations um, has become the backdrop where God has really blessed our nation. Um, our leaders stabilized a very fragile early, early government, if you go back and look at history, because they, they created a lifeline between a nation and God. And the more dependent they were upon God, the more they believed that God would bless that. And they worked real hard to communicate that over and over again. George Washington set the tone for the nation's government authority when he said, it's impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. That philosophy stayed intact. To President Abraham Lincoln, who was quoted as saying, it is my constant anxiety and prayer that both myself and this nation should be always on the Lord's side. Benjamin Franklin explained why he requested that each day of the Continental Convention, conv convention be opened in prayer. The longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth that God governs in the affairs of men. Without this concurring aid, we shall succeed in this political building no better than the builders of Babylon, or Babel. Woodrow Wilson said this, the Bible is the one supreme source of revelation of the meaning of life, the nature of God and spiritual nature and the needs of men. It is the only guide of life which really leads to spirit in the way of peace and salvation America was born a Christian nation. America was born to exemplify that devotion to the elements of righteousness which are derived from the revelations found in Holy Scripture alone. Sound like a little bit like a Baptist pastor. <laughs> Today, I mean, we know those kind of things are under fire. And if it bothers you, then, then it, it should. Um, You go back and you hear about it in the news and you think about that, I, you know, probably the best illustration of this is the battle that we had a few years ago over the Pledge of Allegiance, in the words, and the Pledge of Allegiance said, under God. And there were those who wanted to criticize that by saying, well, under God wasn't in the original Pledge of Allegiance, and it wasn't. They're absolutely right. So ask them then, if someone says that to you, why were they added? Usually at that point, not, they, got, they got nothing. Because they, they, they fired the bullet when they said, well, it wasn't the original Pledge of Allegiance. And that's their Barney Fife moment. They're done now, they have no bullet. Um, and so when you ask them, well, why was it put in? And when was it put in? They got nothing. Because they don't know history. They know a sound bite. History reminds us that in 1954, those two words were inserted into the pledge, partly to distinguish our nation from the um, atheistic communism of the Soviet Union, but also to realign America in a world that was being threatened by Soviet Russia to make sure that we anchored to the founding principles that were a part of our nation from the very beginning. When it was inserted, the statement was made, when the pledge was created, we didn't need to insert the words under God because everybody knew it. We live in an era today where they have forgotten it. And that's 1954. So, at least you have a comeback now when somebody wants to say, hey, well, under God, wasn't in the original, wasn't in the, wasn't in the original pledge. You're right, it wasn't. Then they're absolutely right. Um, our leaders realized once America failed to acknowledge that we were under God, that we have no more basis for freedom. Because if we don't have that idea that's built upon something, it comes crashing down. So that is some of the reason I think that, that we have been able to be who we are in, in, throughout history. And so there's no mystery in that. Uh, America is great because God is great. 
Not because America is always godly, no, but because God has blessed us. And I, for one, am very fortunate uh, to have been born here. I, I, I am proud to be an American, um, and I am a Christian first. I will be American second. Um, but I am a Christian American, and I make no apologies for that. And I think that this is a great place to be able to follow Christ in. And so that is why I think America has been able to do what it has done to this point. So then the question is, where is America in the Bible? And I told, already told you, it ain't. Um, Tim LaHaye, one of the uh, two authors of the Left Behind series, said one of the hardest things for American prophecy students to accept is that the United States is not clearly mentioned in biblical prophecy. And so, as I told you, there are some groups that really, that I think they make a big stretch to get there. They have to take seven skips shoot at Ezekiel to make it work. Um, I don't think that there is a mention of the United States in the Bible. But one reason may be that in the grand scheme of history, the United States is still the new kid on the block. If you go back and you do a deep dive in the Bible, with our nation being less than 300 years old, um, it is much younger than nations that are featured in biblical prophecy. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Bible makes almost no mention of most of the nations in the modern world. Because ancient prophecies basically focused upon the Holy Land and its immediate neighbors. Because that's the world they knew. I mean, that was the world of the first century. So it would make sense then that, that their frame of reference would be there. Uh, that's what they would be seeing. Um, the Ezekiel 38, 13 is that passage that people use sometimes to, to make the jump that America shows up in, in prophecy. And, and I'll let you guys, you can dig on that all day. Um, but there are a number of reasons why those who study such things think that America is not in the end times writings of Scripture. And so this is the point I tell you, we are going way off road. <laughs> I have no idea whether this is right. It is nothing but speculation. Um, some of them are mine. Uh, most of them are not. Uh, and so let me kind of give you that list so just you'll know. Um, there are, there's a school of thought that says the reason that we don't find America in the book of Revelation is because America will be incorporated into the European coalition. And so there are some that begin thinking that. If you go back in history, um, in 2007, President George W. Bush welcomed the EU Commission into the White House along with Angela Merkel. Um, he signed an agreement um, that eliminated the barriers to trade. And he said, the closer that the United States and EU become, the better off our people will become. And on the surface, there's nothing wrong with that, um, especially if it's just a trade agreement. But all agreements have some kind of implication to them down the road. And we've just been through a, a, an administration where trade agreements were um, brought into question, where the thought was out there that maybe these weren't the best for America, and should we be in all of these? And so. Trade agreements are a very big deal right now, but at the end of the day, um, the question becomes, is America still an independent nation? Or we become part of a one global conglomeration of some sort? So there are some that believe that when you get to that part of the revelation in the Bible where all of these nations of the world amass, that the United States is absorbed or becomes part of a different type of an organization. That's what they think. Could be, maybe not. How do you know? Anyway, the other thing is uh, some people believe there's a school of thought that America will be invaded by outside sources, um, that we just won't be a major player anymore, that there's a possibility that um, there will be some sort of attack, uh, that something will happen, and we, uh, at Amer as America, as we know it today, um, won't exist the way that we do. Uh, terrorism, terrorism, geopolitics, cyber war, bio attacks, whatever. Um, Huh? Canadians. Canadians, well, the Canadian, Canadian border is pretty tough. Um, French. But while we have enemies out there, uh, and there are a lot of enemies out there, and they all have different agendas, but you ever notice in the global stage, one thing that everybody has in common is they don't like America. And so, you know, again, when you're the superpower, everybody wants to be your kryptonite. Um, do they have it? I don't know. 
Uh, will they find it? Yeah, you can speculate. It's entirely up to you. Um, but there are some that believe that there is something that's looming in our history that is going to be interesting. Don't kid yourself. That has really ramped up, especially over the past year. Because while we don't think of COVID-19 as a bioattack, I will tell you as sure as I'm standing here that even tonight, I can walk out of this door, get in my car, and I can find at least 10 podcasters that will make that case and convince you that it was. <laughs> now, you can say, well, they're crazy. Well, how do you know? Because if your defense is, well, I just know, well, that would make you crazy now, wouldn't it? <laughs> and so at the end of the day, there is just something about us just to be very aware of the world that we live in and the rapidly changing world that we live in. And go back to what I said earlier, our freedom, who we are as a people, as followers in this nation. We really do need to be serious about that because, I mean, we live in just a rapidly changing world. And so we need to be willing to share the love of God into a world that desperately needs that kind of hope because we're the ones that have something uh, to offer. Um, there is another school of thought that believes that America will not fall um, from an outside force. It will self-implode. And there are a lot of people that today that believe that. They look at the, the way that uh, the politics of the day are running, the way that they look at the, uh, some of the things that they see unfolding in the news. Um, you know, uh, America, if it's going to be attacked, it's going to fall, fall from the inside, and that's where the attack will come. Um, could be, never know. As I said, we're off-road at this point, so <laughs> it's all speculation. It could be, you could be right, you could be wrong. Uh, I know that we're going to start a series that I think you're going to like uh, for the next few weeks called Cancel Culture that really does dive into our culture, uh, but also in how we as followers navigate that cancel culture and how it's not really that new, but there's some lessons that we need to learn from it. Uh, and I think you're going to have a good time at it, and I think it's going to be really encouraging for you. Uh, and so hold on to your hat, and we're going to have, um, and, and 9 and 11, 15 are going to be a little bit different. I can go ahead and tell you that. They're, they're not, it's not the same. It's not going to be the same content in both. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, also, there are another, another school of thought that says America will actually be infected with moral decay. <laughs> um, <laughs> The average lifespan, just so you know, of the world's great civilizations is about 200 to 220 years. We have now eclipsed that. And then when I say that, I mean, you know, Rome still exists, but not like the Rome of old. You know, uh, th those civilizations, those cultures seem to have a shelf life. Um, during that two century span, historians will go back and they will tell you that it happens this way. You move from bondage to spiritual faith, from spiritual faith to courage, from courage to liberty from liberty to abundance, from abundance to complacency, from complacency to apathy, from apathy to dependence, and from dependence back into bondage. Now the question would be, where is America in this cycle? In 1947, forward-looking sociologist Dr. Carl Zimmerman, and see, I have a degree in sociology, so I remember reading about this study. It's the only thing I remember from college. Um, wrote a text called Family and Civilization. And he identified 11 symptoms of final decay that are observable in the fall of Greek and Roman civilizations. I will read that list to you. And then you can decide whether or not we fall into any of these categories. No fault divorce. What they called birth dearth, which is an increased disrespect for parenthood and parents. Meaningless marriage rites and ceremonies. Defamation of past national heroes, acceptance of alternative marriage forms, widespread attitudes of narcissism and hedonism, propagation of anti-family sentiment, acceptance of most forms of immorality, rebellious children, increased juvenile delinquency, and common acceptance of all forms of sexual perversion. So when those lists start rolling, then that seems to be the, p the tipping point for a culture, at least as according to a 1947 study. What did I know back then? But anyway, remember, God blessed this country for a reason. 
And we talked about the fact that even as we were founded, we were founded on a submission to Him. Now, when that becomes a road, when that begins to erode, we can expect blessings themselves to fade. That's a cause and effect. You remove the cause, you remove the effect. I mean, it, 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 and so that's why it just becomes um, more important than ever for us as followers to make sure that we follow in a way that is very um, effective, passionate, with purpose. Because as much as we don't want to hear this reality, the reality is we live in a post-Christian culture. The 60s and 70s are gone. The era of everybody on the block goes to church. That's not where we live anymore. Are there communities that that still happens? Yes, few. And they're few and far between. But that is not the culture overall. And so we live and we minister in a world where that's happening. President Herbert Hoover wrote a warning that has to be heeded. He said, our greatest danger is not from invasion by foreign enemies. Our dangers are that we may commit suicide from within by compliance with evil. And so, um, also, uh, another reason that America may not be mentioned in the Bible is that America will be crippled because of the rapture. In other words, if America is as spiritual, uh, or as spiritual as some have suggested it might be, um, that there will be, in one single moment, uh, many Americans that will disappear. And in that particular case, um, America then, um, in a moment, would lose the salt and light that is in the world. And so for America, then that leads to a very rapid turn of events, a rapid decline, and a rapid changing of what is. And so, so much so that when it comes time for the mention of the nations that take place for that last part of the tribulation, remember that not so great, great part of the tribulation, um, America is not there uh, because the salt and light is gone. And so as a result, America uh, doesn't, st doesn't survive. Um, and so we look at those kind of things and we think, okay, well, how does that work and what does it mean? And it simply just means this, uh, that when you read Revelation and you're looking for America, you probably don't find it. I think there's a reason that America has been blessed. I think historically we can prove that. Um, I have no idea whether anything I just told you is correct or not about why America is not there. But if you have a better idea, feel free to write a book and use your idea. Um, because you can't be any more wrong than I am. Uh, and you won't be any more right than I am. Uh, because again, there are just ideas. And there are probably, I would venture to say, uh, there may be a variety of that combination that comes into play to make it happen. Uh, but the great news is, Amy's takeaway is, <laughs> we don't have to go through it. We'll be in good shape. We're good. And so that way, uh, all of this means nothing. And so for the 12 weeks you've endured this, you can completely <laughs> ignore it. Um, there's really, really, really nothing, nothing valuable came out of it. Um, and I think we're, we're good to go. We're done. So let's... Uh, We need to not be getting rid of our Bibles so when we are raptured up, those that go, oh my gosh, they were right, where's their Bible? It will yeah. be on our phone, on our app that they can't unlock, right? Oh. Put Bibles around if this is the answer, go to John. Or, tell your family, I'm going to leave this. If you, wanna, if you have an iPhone and you want to put in your notes section where you've hidden your Bible, just make sure that your code to unlock your phone is 666. <laughs> and then that way... <laughs> Hey, I'm in! Uh, and just see what, see what happens to that. Let's pray, uh, and we'll be done. God, we thank you that you've given us a book about the end, and we don't need to sweat it. Uh, we are reminded that you really are in charge, and we are so glad. And we thank you for the opportunity that we've had, uh, the privilege that we've had, to be able to dive just a little bit deeper into some subjects that sometimes um, seem a little bit beyond our reach and a little bit more than we want to wrestle with. And so, God, I'm thankful for this group of folks and those who have watched along the way, who continue to watch, that are on that journey with us. And I just ask that you would just take the things that we've seen and we've heard and we've looked at, and then in our lives, you would bless them. You promised you would. You always keep your promises, and so we know you will. Uh, God, be with us and help us leave this place with a sense of confidence for the future and know that our future is secure in you. 
We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.